calls. We discuss in this episode of The Chiefs. Welcome to this special edition of The Chiefs, and with us is Luci Cruz Valdez of News 5. Hi, Luci. Good evening. And uh, oh, okay, there's Robbie Alampay. Welcome. Good evening. One day before Friday. Why holiday bukas? Oh, nga, and it's a holiday. And big news, nyo, Robbie. Oh. Okay, what are you monitoring, Luci? Wala pa yata. No notification. Oh, oh, Bye, Cam, no? Oh, nga, so, kaya um, mukhang nagwagi yung 140 billion pero yeah. gawa nilang standby yung 25 oh. billion. Oh. Oh. Uh, Depende well, lang kung source nila yung funding for it. Oh, ah, na, 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 good compromise, no? Yes. yes. Saka yung tourism enterprises, at least nabigyan yata sila ng 4 billion direct assistance, no? And additional through GFI. So, medyo malaki-laki din yun. Yes, so, maybe yes. we can discuss that in another episode. Right. Si Sino, wala, saka yung ano, yung may 10 billion for vaccines. Kung magkakaroon ka tayo siya, no? Tapos 15 billion for health workers yes. na may mild or moderate symptoms, yes. di ba? So, so, malaki rin na rin yun, di ba? Malaki rin. So, uh, Robin, so, uh, economist, sa so, tingin mo, may pera ba tayo to fund that? And we all have we all have the same questions, but one one particular sector that's quite important also to the economy and to everything. Malaking balita. This is actually a follow up to something na binalita natin. Just I think if not just yesterday, the other day, government is again allowing public health workers to to go abroad. Uh, uh, and the ones oh, with contracts before March 8th. Yes, before mm -hmm. March 8th. Yeah. Ah, pero malaking balita to because the other day ang balita di ba may magandang balita may magandang ang story yes. yung news five dyan, that nurse who was really right. devastated at tagal niya tinrabaho ang si mahal ng binayan niya sa testing yeah mm. And remember, ang isang context dito, when we talk to the Philippine Association of um, Nurses, yung isang context dito, sabi niya, naiintindihan naman natin, syempre, kailangan natin ng mga nurses dito. But, we have 200,000 nurses na walang trabaho. So, sinasabi niya, we can actually serve every We can allow people to have their rights to go abroad, pursue their dreams and their opportunities and so on. And we still have a surplus of nurses here. So sabi nila, there, really something, there is really something to attend to in our public health system. Now, on the one hand, you have to, a surplus of 200,000 yes. uh, nurses and government is saying, my shortage tayo ng nurses. Something doesn't add up. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, ang konti lang pala ng mga yun eh, no? Yung meron mm. na sila. It's a few hundred. It's a few hundred. Yeah, yeah it's mm. a drop in the bucket compared to the mm -hmm. figure of uh, nurses. No? Tsaka marami sa kanila nag-apply, pero hindi mm. na panggap. That, that's the irony. Mm. No? So they even attempted to actually work, but uh -huh. they couldn't find work. Yeah. Well, tingnan natin ngayon. Ngayon, sabi ng gobyerno, they need more health workers. Tingnan natin kung yung may iwan dito, madadagdagan, no? And in, in the meantime, yun na, yun na, yun na nila. Eh, yung mga nandito sa Metro Manila, ang pinaproblema nila, as in the past, yung ano pa rin, eh, yung transport, eh. Yes. Yeah. Kaya may, ano nga yun, may, may proposal nga nga. Ayan na yung segway mo. <laughs> Ayan na yung segway ko. <laughs> well, isa, isa yung kailangan-kailangan, sinasabi ng mga workers, employees, balik nila yung metro taxi. So, yes. and yes. that's our guest mm. na isang proponent niyan. We'd like to welcome our guest for tonight, our first guest, pero by phone, phone patch only, is House Committee on Transportation Chairman, uh, Congressman Edgar Mary Sarmiento of Summer's First District. Good evening, Congressman. Can you hear us clearly? Good evening, Congressman Sarmiento. Wala pa yata siya. Nakasakay ka na pa sa motorcycle taxi, either of you. Ako kasi hindi pa. Ako, 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 ako,
uh, uh, even before before pa nagkaroon na itong mga ano pa habal-habal pa lang mga bawal pa lang oh. sumasakay na Oh. <laughs> hindi ako lang pa nung hindi pa sila nung hindi pa sila regulated really. Oh. I remember Lucci nung nagre-report pa tayo sa Maraho sa sa BGC um, oh. and then I would go home to to Makati very uh, ano mag magmo-motorcycle taxi ako noon bawal pa nga sila. Nag-aabang-aabang ka doon. Hindi na hindi pagkatapos ng ano na. Yeah, pero sumasakay na ako, nakasakay na ako doon. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes. Very fast. Yes. Yes. They are still required to use the ano no yung barrier. Supplier, no? Oh. <laughs> One million do na wala sa kanya. But oh. we'll, we'll try to connect again with Congressman Sarmiento. Good evening po, Congressman. Good evening, Congressman Sarmiento. This is a phone pad to remember, so Congressman Sarmiento can hear you. Okay na po lang, may video na. Congressman, again. Uh, Sarmiento, Congressman Sarmiento. Good evening po. I'm actually I'm here. Yes. Ah, okay. okay. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, when we were talking about this proposal, na marami na pong humihingi ng motorcycle. Good, good evening, the chiefs. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good yes. Evening. Uh, good evening. Good po. evening to our televiewers. Good evening, everyone. Thanks. Yes. Thanks for having me. Okay. Thanks for being here. We need the motorcycles. Yes. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, right now, the status right now, the train is only coming in. At, we only have a maximum of thirty percent capacity in train. The buses yes. and the jeep. This we only have fifty percent. So we really need another transportation, and that is the motorcycle taxi. True enough, we still have a problem in amending the laws, but as of the moment, kailangan po talaga natin a motorcycle. In fact, on the study we had, which was submitted to us by the technical working group, just for uh, in a one month's time, they were able to uh, have uh, passengers totaling to around. Uh, almost 8 million passengers in just one month. So you can really see the importance of the motorcycle taxi. Mm -hmm. uh, Congressman, how, how, how do you envision the safety protocols for the taxi? There's been a lot of debate about it. Of course, some of the things are put forward by the DAFG and the government, including the barrier, but the motorcycle riders are saying this actually adds uh, to the dangers and the risk. How do you see the the, uh, the the health protocols for this motorcycle tax? Grabbing, uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. The relevant to health protocols, it was presented to us by a consult, by the resource person in one of our meetings. In fact, uh, motorcycles coming in is one of the safest means of transportation. It's an open, uh, uh, every, it's, everything is open. Then the driver is shielded by the helmet itself. They have jackets and plus the shield is imposed by IATF. So nakikita talaga natin, it's very safe. And uh, on the safe side of the, the motorcycle itself, the report we got from the technical working group, actually the number of incidents or accidents is very low. Uh, it's uh, around one accident in every 300 uh, uh, motorcycle. That is the ratio that we're having right now. Now, the, the status is that we have to amend the uh, law pertinent to the motorcycle taxi or the two-wheel vehicle because of the, sense of the moment, based on R1, RA4130, this is only four-wheel vehicles are allowed. This is where Congress is coming in, and we're hoping that uh, we will be given a three to six more uh, months to come up with the final technical working group uh, report because uh, the pilot study was put to stop on the onset of the pandemic. Hindi po ito natatapos report. We still have to get the comment from the DICP and the reports from Visayas, from Cebu specifically, and in Mindanao. Because, but it included as well Cebu and in Mindanao.
That is the moment, uh, that is the status of the government. That's what I am ano po, as a chairman of the Committee on Transportation for government to consider really allowing on motorcycle taxi in the absence of the law. I am appealing because we are still in the process really of amending the law. Again, Luchi, please. I, yes, sir. No, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. No, I think kasi ma uh, mahaba please, po uh, kasi yung delay natin. Pasensya na po. Uh, sorry, ma mahaba po kasi yung, uh, yung, yung delay I, natin. I, I can. Yeah. Uh, so, so far, that is the appeal coming from the chairman and the committee on transportation of the house. Okay, so if I'm understanding it correctly, they, I mean, this is a legislative process that was started before pa nga nag yung, yung, uh, yung, yung quarantine. But if I'm understanding you correctly, you're appealing for basically some stopgap uh, accommodation or provision uh, while we are still undergoing the process in the meantime in this emergency situation we need to provide these additional modes of transportation we need we need that's right ruby we need uh, it's a stopgap but while we are again on the process of going through the amending of the law, we have to allow this because we still need some uh, data or data coming from the pilot uh, test of motorcycle taxi. I'm hoping the executives will understand where Congress is coming from and they will now allow because we need it. In fact, we already wrote an official communication to IATF and the Department of Transportation to allow now the motorcycle taxis. Again, there's an urgency for it. The number of, ve the number of vehicles right now in terms of, of uh, passengers is down to a maximum of around 40%. We want to restart the economy, and transportation is a must in restarting the economy. Okay. Congressman, paano po yung mga protocols? Medyo tedious po ang mga protocols right now, no? Uh, halimbawa, hindi lang yung barrier, kundi yung sanitizing, the, sh the helmets, uh, and then uh, kailangan mag-fill up ng COVID, ng contact tracing list, uh, kailangan muna ayusin yun bago mag-hail. Uh, lahat ba yan? Gagawin nyo ba yung parte ng batas na binabalangkas niyo? Delay ba yun o? Delay. Delay. Congressman. No, remember, remember, Luchi, that this is just pandemic. Uh, so totally, but in the norms, this is this should not be the protocol. Okay. But, uh, but we're, 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 we're hoping, we're hoping that, uh, uh, yes, we're hoping that really during this pandemic, again, true enough, we have some protocols to follow to make sure that the transmission is contained. And then a motorcycle is one transport uh, has the advantage because there are only two passengers. On the application itself, you can already know the passengers that is going to take the motorcycle taxi. And, uh, and, and, and the appeal, again, is that we're hoping that the executives will consider, IATF, the Department of Transportation, will consider motorcycle tax to restart the economy. Wala ulit. Thank you. Okay. Nawala pa si Edna or naka-audio lang tayo? Na-audio na lang ba siya? Naka-audio lang siya. I mean, Congressman, can you, uh, if you can still hear us, um, moving on to other modes of transportation, existing ones. Uh, yesterday, we had an, an, uh, a conversation with Asik Swat Singh of the DOTR. Uh, with regards to the proposal to shift the business model and the model for, for mass transit, specifically buses and jeepneys, uh, from private franchising to service contracting. Your thoughts, sir? On, uh, on 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 moving our mass transit system to, to service contract. 
Oh, Nakinig. 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 Nak from where he is, we'll need to take a break. Please stay with us. The thief should be right back. Welcome back, the Chiefs. Let's continue our conversation tonight. Joining us uh, now is Noli Yala, Joyride's Vice President of Affairs. Uh, uh, Tony Yala, welcome to the Chiefs. Thank you very much, uh, Robbie. Thank you for having me. Uh, I mean, ano po bang kinatatayo ngayon ng mga ating mga two-wheeled uh, uh, transport? I mean, what exactly is the situation and what are you hopeful for in the coming weeks? A lot of people, of course, as you know, are eagerly awaiting clearer guidelines and ano ba talaga yung uh, maaasahan natin? Kami rin, ganun din ang aming uh, hinahanap, no? clearer guidelines. Um, right now kasi, uh, what we uh, are really hoping, and I heard your interview with Congressman Sarmiento, um, we, were, we participated in the hearings ng Committee on Transportation mm -hmm. and uh, we were asked to uh, submit uh, a position paper and uh, we have done that. Uh, we have also submitted our own version of our protective shield to the IATF as well as to the NTF. And we are uh, awaiting uh, approval by uh, the NTF as if this was already referred to them. And we have participated in at least uh, two um, meetings of the TWG. So um, at this point, um, we are supporting and we are also encouraging uh, and calling up the IATF as well as the DOTR. Um, to uh, perhaps uh, uh, approve or take action on the resolution of the House, which is to uh, extend the pilot run that was initiated by the DOPR last December, uh, which was stopped by the pandemic uh, last March, and also to allow already the return of the MC tax services. Uh, our position kasi natin dito, uh, Robbie, is very clear. No, um, During the pilot run, uh, the MC taxi services, at least the, the ride-hailing, mobile-based uh, uh, participants, uh, we were all uh, able to um, uh, conduct uh, our services uh, very successfully. Our uh, accident rate was very low. And at the same time, we were able to serve uh, a lot of commuters, as the congressman said, mm -hmm. no? uh, almost 8 million uh, um, uh, or customers uh, in the three-month period. So we really believe, and based on the uh, study of a um, of one of the coalitions of transport, um, with over 10 million uh, pre-COVID uh, passengers in Metro Manila, and what they expect to be 50% of that to come back post-ECQ, um, mm. we feel that uh, it is um, going to be very important that the transportation sector is uh, buttressed and we certainly believe that uh, AMC taxi services or the ride-hailing uh, services uh, will, will help a big deal sa pagtulong sa ating mga mananakay. 
Kay Mr. Ayala, I mean, everybody understands that itong mga services nyo, especially being app-based, a big part of your business has to do with the data and that you're understanding, or especially on the demand side. Before we get to the policies and what you're hoping for, uh, could you give us some insights on what data is, is showing, is, is telling us about our people? about the demand, about their behavior, about their constraints. Ano po ba yung nakikita natin based sa nakikita nyo uh, that will give us some additional insight on what our people need and are not finding right now? Well, you know, um, we, made a, we made a position paper both uh, as to um, the pre-pandemic condition as well as the post-lockdown uh, and uh, we presented there the fact that, uh, as I said, no, the motorcycle taxi services have been very safe, very reliable, and efficient during the uh, uh, pilot run. Now, after the lockdown period, uh, there were many concerns about the return of uh, transport. And even if the government uh, decided to return some of the modes of transport, ang nakikita ng, ng aming mga pag-aaral, I, uh, marami pa rin hesitation when it comes to the use of certain modes of transport. There is also hesitation on the part of uh, transport operators to uh, begin operations because of the, number one, uh, limited capacity that they are allowed, and therefore it becomes unviable for them to operate their own uh, uh, operations. And number two, there is a lot of hesitation uh, considering the, uh, the spread of the virus, no? Um, there have been studies, for instance, that um, um, outdoor activities, and this is uh, validated by the CDC, are more uh, are less risky than indoor activities, and this includes uh, enclosed areas compared to outdoor areas. There was a study also by the um, by a um, journal of uh, photochemistry and photobiology released in June that uh, at least 90% of the coronavirus is uh, inactivated if, if it is exposed to the sun. And as you know, uh, motorcycle taxi services are not limited by windows or doors uh, and therefore are clearly uh, categorized as outdoor uh, modes of transportation. And we feel very confident that with these um, conditions, uh, the motorcycle taxi service is not only safe, but it's also appropriate for, this, uh, for the cur current situation. You're saying they're actually safer because this is what some officials in several agencies are saying. Na, na hindi naman daw pang long term to na stop gap lang yung motorcycle taxi sabang kulang yung transportation. And they still consider motorcycle taxis as unsafe. You are saying this is not true. Uh, well, our studies show, and I think the uh, pilot run uh, has already also showed it that our um, accident rate has been 0.0009% uh, 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 during the three-month period. No, uh, This is way lower than the national average, and this is so much lower than the international average no, uh, of accidents involving motorcycles. So um, uh, we, we feel that uh, what we have done pre-pandemic, uh, which are the uh, safety on us by the PWG uh, has helped our services and at the same time post uh, or rather during the lockdown and post ECQ uh, with the additional uh, health and safety protocols that we are planning to, uh, to institute we feel that uh, this will our services will be made even more uh, efficient safer and of course reliable but the so, Lord, you have Oh, because of the, siguro dahil ko konti yung sasakyan sa, ano, hindi ba? Can you say that, that during the yeah. pandemic, ko konti kasi yung sasakyan. In fact, then, kung if you consider the, ano, the volume of, uh, of of vehicles on the street, baka lumabas dyan, medyo mapas pa rin yun, eh, percentage-wise. Um, yung pong aming numero was taken during the uh, three yes. months. Right. Kasi nga, ko konti yung sasakyan, hindi ba? Can you... Paano ko yung three months before COVID? Before, before, before lockdown. Before, okay. Yes. So yun yung number na normal metro Manila traffic, no? Yeah, yeah. Ako naman, ang concern ko, 
Kasi yung barrier, marami pa rin nagsasabi na mas risky pa nga yung may barrier. Plus, hindi lang yung barrier, no, Lee, eh. pati yung helmet, di ba? I don't know about you, but I would feel very, very uncomfortable about wearing a helmet that someone else may have worn na baka positive. But hindi ba, uh, you know, what kind of assurance can you actually give to passengers na hindi nila alam kung sino yung nagsuot ng helmet na isusuot nila plus, of course, the other risks that come with riding a uh, motorcycle taxi. That's a very good point, Ma'am Lucci. No? Uh, and let me break it down. No? Uh, on the uh, barrier itself, uh, it has been a position of joyride, uh, and we share this with other uh, groups as well as uh, cer certain government officials, that um, you know, there is really no need for the barrier. Uh, we believe that uh, this is an additional measure. It is not uh, wrong, although it is not necessary. However, because of the uh, and the resolution of the IATF to impose the barrier on uh, on back riders, uh, Joyride has submitted its own design to the NTF. Minarapat po namin yon para po makita nila mismo yung ginawa namin. So um, we are prepared if the resolution is uh, continued, and we are also prepared if it is not. Now, on the point ho, of the helmet, um, yes. it, is, it is now going to be the policy of Joyride if and when the MC taxi services are resumed na hindi na po pwede maghiraman ng helmet. So we will not hmm. provide helmets to our passengers. Oh. The passengers oh. must provide their own helmets if they want to ride as a passenger of Joyride Services. Uh, this is Magkano the yun? Magkano yung mga helmet na yun? May kamahalan yun, di ba? Lalo na pag talagang, uh, I mean, you know, standard, ano, safe helmet. Not, not only that, uh, dadagdag ako dun sa tanong ni Luchi, does it not actually uh, have the unintended consequence of people buying cheap fake, substandard helmet. Para yeah. lang cosmetically, mukhang naka-helmet siya. Doesn't that uh, pose additional risk? Yes. Uh, well, let me let me just say that uh, you will be surprised, no? That many of those who are uh, uh, regular riders, MC Taxi Services, uh, have have their own helmets, no? Uh, it is a, it is actually, it has actually been a practice for some of them, no? Um, and we, we certainly understand that this is going to be um, this is going to be an additional cost to to the, to the passengers. However, we feel that this is necessary at this time, no? Uh, given the extraordinary times, meron naman ako kaming gagawin sa Joyride na parang uh, mga promotional um, activities so that we pwede ho namin maibsan yung cost para sa mga pasahero. So there will be certain promos that the company uh, is already preparing so that uh, passengers can uh, purchase and can obtain uh, helmets that are of quality um, uh, at affordable prices under the promotional activities of Joyride. Okay, pagkano nga ba kailangan kong ihanda? For my very basic, uh, pero, pero up to standard, uh, ano, helmet. Al alam niyo po, alam niyo po yung uh, barrier na yun, binibenta, I, I understand, ng mahigit. 500. Uh, helmet. Eh, yung helmet po, konting dagdag na lamang, eh, makakabili na kayo ng helmet. So, hindi, hindi naman po ganun kalakihan ang presyo oh. po ng helmet. Mga... Uh, even up to uh, 2,000 po, makakakuha na kayo ng helmet. 2,000? 2,000 na. 2,000. Laki pa rin yan, ha? Eh, pero hindi na. Kung ka malimit yung market ninyo, kung i-require ninyo na bumili ng helmet ang mga pasahero, di ba liliit yung demand? Well, Kasi hindi naman lahat makaka-afford pa rin ng 1,000. Sabihin na natin, 300 na helmet. Hmm. Well, again, um, uh, Luchi, this is uh, really driven by the necessity to put safety yeah. first. No? Um, yeah. Ayaw po namin to take the risk. Uh, yeah. we, we certainly do not also want to give a, yes, a sense of security na 
uh, hindi po um, akma para sa ating mga mananakay. So, uh, uh, Attorney, can, we, can I just clarify? You are seeing this as a policy of joyride, not necessarily as part of the law we're expecting. So this is going to be, uh, now, as far as you know, joyride. Again, uh, Robbie, the, the idea that we have at this point is that, um, as Congressman Sarmiento mentioned, uh, while the law or the legislation is still pending and uh, is still being um, um, uh, 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 discussed in Congress, uh, be uh, temporary or uh, uh, you know only for this period where we have the situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do not know what is going to be in the actual law that will be. This is part of the measures that we are proposing uh, in order extend the pilot run and at the same time allow again NC taxi services to uh, to operate during this uh, period of the lockdown. In the meantime, Atori, are you considering diversification? Kasi mm, medyo hindi lang during the pandemic uncertain yung, yung business eh. Even after, hindi pa natin sigurado kung matutuloy yun because officials are resistant to it. Are you thinking of well, uh, diversification? Yes, uh, Mama Ami, no? we have actually uh, pivoted our business uh, because nga ang dami pong kinamaan ng mga riders. Um, Joyride pivoted uh, immediately after the lockdown was imposed on Metro Manila uh, as well as in Cebu uh, by uh, offering delivery services. So we have converted a lot of our riders into uh, Joyride delivery and yes. Joyride pabili together with our mother, uh, our sister company, Happy Move. No, so. Uh, we have uh, also decided to team up with LGUs to um, allow motorcycle or other tricycle drivers to be included in our Joyride platform mm -hmm. as delivery, delivery providers. And oh, we have launched okay. a unique version of uh, a taxi service called the Taxicle using the tricycle in uh, an, an LGU. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Ano po, yung uh, uh, on-demand na tricycle service. No? So, ah, okay yun, no? if really pivoted our uh, business, dahil yes. nga po namin na uh, ang dami po naman ng mga uh, bikers namin during this lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, Pero pwede ba kayo mag-fly ng major thoroughfares with that taxi? Hindi, di ba? Hindi po. Mga uh, in the road stream lang. Lucci, the, uh, the, the pilot run that we have for uh, the taxi kill is only in the city of Antipolo. Uh, ito po ay uh, in, in cooperation uh, with the uh, LGU of Antipolo, uh, headed by Mayor uh, Andrea Inares. So, uh, doon lang po kami nag-ooperate. We, we are trying it out, and so far it has been very successful. Yes. And we hope that uh, eventually we can uh, maybe propose this to other LGUs. Ano po yan? I mean, you're licensing your platform to the LGU or enrolling the tricycle drivers as... How does it work? Uh, we are just simply uh, making their tricycle uh, uh, fleet or the TODA um, hmm. enroll or onboard our uh, mobile app. And uh, we, we allow them to use our uh, mobile app so that they can mm -hmm. uh, obtain also passengers in their city, in the city lang. Uh, this is uh, okay. within the jurisdiction only of the LGU. Yes, and that's a separate, that, that is a separate uh, regulatory concern with regards to, ano, kasi ang tricycles allowed na, eh, di ba? Legal na yung mga toda. So, hindi, you can do that immediately. You can pilot that, as you said, you're already piloting it. Okay, as a separate concern from what you're hoping to get for the vehicles. Exactly, Robbie. No, uh, as you know, mm -hmm. the tricycles are under the jurisdiction of the local government. So yes. this is uh, mm -hmm. just a partnership, a program in partnership with the city of Antipolo. So immediately, uh, we were able, uh, even as early as July, we were already doing this in uh, Antipolo. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Oh, Last time, wala bang foldable helmet? Kawawa mga babae. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 amin talagang gusto eh na experience ang ating mananakay. Uh, I, just to give you an idea, actually our band uh -huh. 
Yeah, this is the barrier. It is, very, it is, it is very light. It's lightweight. It is backpack. Uh, 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 polypropylene inside and uh, nice. ballistic nylon outside. So this is the uh, material used for luggages. So yeah. it's oh, porous. As well as so, yes, yes. So it is very safe. It is malleable. It is um, sturdy enough to hold on to. There are handles here at the back, so you can hold on to the uh, to the actual shield. Uh, and we have submitted this already to the NTF, and we're. Certainly hoping that uh, we could uh, get approval as soon as possible because we believe that there should be uh, another option or another alternative yes. in the market. Mm -hmm. Hindi lang yung inapproved so far. Ng, uh, Hindi ba yung mapipenetrate ng droplet sa virus? Hindi po, ma'am. Or is it a luggage na raw eh? It, it actually, it actually uh, escapes uh, yung, yung pong droplets uh, and... Oh. Of course, we have our hy hygiene protocols of yes. every time there is somebody that will be a rider, immediately yes. after, our biker will wipe and uh, uh, disinfect our uh, our shield. So there are protocols also that we are uh, uh, we are undertaking for this particular uh, use of the, of the protective shield. Okay. 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 Uh, Joyride Vice President Attorney Noli Iyala, maraming salamat po for joining us. Thank you, Noli. Thank you Salamat po. Okay. We need to take another break. Please stay with us. The Chiefs will be right back. final stage of our conversation and now joining us is Mayor Toby Tianco of Navota City. Welcome back to the Chief's Mayor. Kumusta po? Hi Tina. Uh, okay naman. Good, Good evening. evening. Well, well uh, we're with uh, Robbie Alampay and Luchi Cruz Maldet, of course. Hi it's Robbie. Good. Hi Luchi. Good evening Mayor. Mayor, evening. You, you implemented the citywide lockdown. At uh, you're, you're, one of, you're among those who have also implemented what we call granular lockdowns. Kumusta na po ang status ngayon sa nabotas na COVID? Uh, yes, naging effective no. no from the lockdown, nasa ano kami noon? Nasa um, 23%, no? Um, and then uh, latest is nasa 14% kami. So effective yung lockdown. Yung mga granular lockdowns ngayon. Yung mga... Ano, ngayon, wala kaming granular ngayon. Wala kaming, wala kaming granular lockdown ngayon. Um, oh. Sinusunod namin yung parameters ng uh, GCQ. No? Mm. Yeah. Yung, yung testing, yung tracing ninyo, yung mga long-term changes nyo may, may in-implement ba ngayon after the lockdown? Ah, yes. yes. Um, kasabay ng lockdown... We increased the testing capacity from yes. 300 to um, uh, 2,000. No, mm -hmm. kaya lang ang nakakalungkot is kahit nag 2,000 kami na capacity, ang pinakamataas na nakayan na nag-avail is 1,333 only. Kasi ang first priority doon sa testing is yung mga contact na contact trace, di ba? Mm -hmm. Yon talagang mandatory na magpa 
magpa-swab sila. Pero hindi naman naabot ng 2,000 yon So nag accept na kami ng walk-in at nag accept kami ng employees of companies in Navotas kahit hindi sila taga Navotas. But even nung nasa 2,000 kami, ang pinakamataas na naabot namin is 1,333. So hindi na ma-maximize ng tao yung testing capacity. Um, sa ngayon, nasa 1,000 kami because yung Palacio del Manila is closed in the meantime. So sa local swabbing kami, sa local, sa Navotas mismo, ang capacity namin is 1,000. Kahapon, naka 438. Ngayon, halos 500. So kanina nga, hmm. nag-meeting kami kung paanong mapapataas pa yung mga mag-a-avail. No? Pero um, we have already swabbed 25,004 um, residents out of 260,000 267,000 residents. So, naka 9.36 na kami. Yes, almost. Mm -hmm. Bakit kaya ayaw nila? Bakit kaya kahit na gold standard PCR na ayaw pa rin? Anong mga dahilan? Um, yun nga yung pinagtataka namin. Eh, no? um, that's why kanina um, in-identify na lang namin kung sino yung mga madaming makakasalamuha and we will require it na. For example, um, Dati, voluntary yan sa mga pedicabs, sa mga tricycle drivers, sa PUJ drivers. Ngayon, gagawin na namin mandatory. Doon sa mga nagtitinda sa palengke, sa grocery, food service, we will make it mandatory already. Yes. Uh -oh. Mandatory and free, no? Free guys. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it's to totally free. Walang, walang, walang bayad to. I don't understand why they don't want. Kasi pag pumunta sila sa private, uh, babayad sila. 8,000 hmm. yata pinakamura. Ito, totally free. Walang, hindi kaya uh, na kapag nag-positive sila, hindi sila makakapagtrabaho. Yes. For at least 14 days. Yeah. Yes, but but, um, but uh, that's a fact, di ba? Kaya nga pinapaliwanag namin sa kanila, um, natatakot kayo. Of course, ang unang-una kasi, nahihirapan na yung mga tao sa buhay nila ngayon. Hmm. So ang yeah, explanation yeah. namin, yes, ano ba ang dahilan ng paghihirap ninyo? Ang, pag ang dahilan ng paghihirap ninyo, is because of COVID. So, mas mabilis natin masolusyonan yung COVID, mas mabilis tayong makakabangon sa ating katayuan ngayon. In fact, in fact, doon sa mga tinatawag natin walk-in, ang definition namin ng walk-in is hindi sila close contact, no? Mm. Lahat ng walk-in, we do not require them to go under quarantine while waiting for the results. Ang kailangan lang mag-quarantine while waiting for the results is yung mga close contact. Kasi um, close contact sila, no? At first nga, tinatanong, bakit hindi rin require yung quarantine para sa hindi close contact? Sabi ko kasi, if you require them, and that is the reason why they will not um, take the swab. Kasi kunyari, tatlong araw siya mawawala ng trabaho, at yan yung dahilan ng, ng hindi niya pagpaswab, you do not gain anything. On the yeah. other hand, kung i-wave mo na yung, yung quarantine period, anyway, hindi naman siya close contact, eh, yeah. you gain something kasi nagpa-test siya. Right, diba? right. Okay. So, doon sa mandatory yeah, yeah. testing, yes, go ahead. Uh, yung, ko lang, yung kanina yung binabanggit nyo na 23% to down to 14%, you're referring to positivity rate, no? Yes, positivity rate. Uh, positivity rate from the beginning of the lockdown towards so, the oh, tapos hanggang kahapon, no? And uh, ang isa pang important data, kasi napaka-stricto namin sa ano eh, sa isolation, hindi kami pumapayag in principle ng home, home isolation. No? So, mm. ang na-isolate na namin is, ang napadala na namin sa community isolation facility is 1,451 patients. So, yun yung gusto kong tanongin eh. Because the last time uh -huh. you were here, yan yung pinag-uusapan. Na hindi, hindi na mandatory to. Kung nandiyan ka, kaya isolate ka, hindi pwede sa, sa bahay. Um, and we were talking about that. What might be your insights on that? Because at that time, it was still... Somewhat controversial, people were reluctant, eh, hindi, gusto ko sa bahay. When it comes to convincing people na hindi, wag na dyan sa bahay, dito, dito talaga, in fact, hindi, hindi to pakiusap, dito encouraging, we're telling you have to do this. What other insights have you gotten from the time, especially when Nabotas was an outlier? The whole of NCR said, hindi, uh, we will reopen. Nabotas was really saying, no, no, kailangan namin mag-lockdown mag ulit. What additional insights did, did you gain uh, from that decision? Um, wala naman tayong gustong sisihin, no? Pero alam, di ba, I, I think you remember the time when I wanted to um, lengthen the ECQ per nag-MECQ. Ang sinabi yes. ko noon, 
was kung nagmadali tayo, babalik rin naman tayo dito kung, kung hindi pa ready. Diba? Ganun din yung nangyari. So, um, ganun na nga yung nangyari. So, we've also learned our lesson. No? And one of the lessons is hindi talaga pa pwede yung, yung home quarantine because pa, paano babantayan ng barangay yung mga nag-home quarantine? O assuming mabantayan yung bahay, pa, paano natin masisigurado sa loob ng bahay, hindi sila naghahawaan? So, ang ginagawa niyan, kinukumbinsi muna pag ayaw talaga, pinapadala ng sulat, reminding them of the provisions of RA 11332 na may penal provision yon at may fine hanggang 50,000. Um, and uh, based on our experience, pag natanggap na nila yung sulat, yung mga ayaw, tumasama na. Of course, mayroong mga exempted talaga dyan. Kunyari, PWD, um, hindi, immobile siya, hindi niya kaya maglakad mag-isa. Siyempre, hindi naman natin pwede dalhin sa community isolation facility yan. Kung breastfeeding mother yan, hindi naman natin pwede rin dalhin sa community isolation facility. But those are the very limited exemptions. Or, kunyari, anim sila sa pamilya, anim lang talaga sila, ay lahat na sila positive. Kesa dalhin naman naman namin yung anim, hindi na lang papalabasin. But if there is even one na um, hindi positive, as long as hindi minor yon, dadali namin sa community isolation facility. Mm-hmm. Mayor, alam niyo yung nag-MECQ, lahat ng in-interview namin, sinasabi na maganda raw yun kasi they're hoping that by the time the MECQ is over, meron ng mga behavioral changes ang mga Pilipino para mas kaya ng mag-GCQ at mas maganda na ang uh, kalalabasan in terms of the numbers. Uh, nakita nyo ba yan ang nangyayari sa Nabotas after you did the lockdown? Um, alam nyo, noong ng MECQ, ang, ang worry ko kasi ang dami pa rin kasi namin na ang pinakamadaming violators ng MECQ is yung improper wearing of face mask. So, yun yung worry ko because pagdating sa GCQ, talagang yun na lang talaga yung strongest defense ng tao. Eh. Because yung, yung home quarantine pass kami sa Navotas, we implement it only for going to the market and do groceries. Kasi para wag silang maging masikip doon sa market at sa groceries. Pero hindi mo na sila makikwestiyon kasi pwede na sila mag-dine out as a family basta uh, 30% lang yung capacity ng kakainan nila no so ang hirap na talaga mas madami talaga tao lalabas so talagang dito ang kailangan na mabantayan is yung proper wearing of face mask and social distancing kasi paghugas ng kamay hindi mo naman sila mababantayan na maghugas ng kamay so yan dalawang yan ang napaka importante talaga pagdating sa GCQ and of course dito sa Navotas since meron pa kaming um, available test ang gusto talaga namin, magpa-test, ma-maximize yung 1,000 test. So we're finding ways to encourage people. Pag hindi talaga ma-encourage, wala kaming choice kung hindi make, to make it mandatory to those high-risk occupations. No? Kasi yung tricycle driver, ang daming nakakaharap niya. So pwede siyang mahawa. Yung uh, market vendor o yung sa palengke, ganun din, ang daming nakakaharap niya. So we have to, we have to do it. And when you say you make the painful you... decisions. Yeah. When when you say you 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 have to encourage is it just limited to education and information or is there actually a way to incentivize people to to have themselves tested? Um incentivize I think it's uh, <laughs> ipinag-iisipan namin yan kanina eh um wala eh kasi it's enough incentive that we're giving it for mm-hmm. free and malalaman mm-hmm. mo kung kung yeah. ikaw ay If you're putting your family members in danger, di ba? I mean, mm. doon sa mga talaga ng gusto, uh, it's Siguro enough mayor. incentive na libre. Yes? Oh, sabihin yeah. nyo, Mayor, kung magkano yon sa labas, baka, baka ganahan sila. Sabihin no. nyo, okay, sila pagkakasan sa labas. Oh, yun, sinabi, na namin na, sinabi na nga namin, Tina, na 8,000. And you remember, oh. there was a time, there was a time prior to the MECQ, na even if you're willing to pay 8,000, kung wala kang symptoms, you have to schedule oh. it. Hindi yes. yung pag-walk-in mo, eh, um, mm. ma-accommodate ka kaagad. So, pinag-aaralan pa namin. Every day naman kasi Monday to Friday, meron kaming 6 o'clock meeting. So, iniisip talaga namin kung kung papaanong ma- 
Enggan niyo yung tao. Kung meron kayong suggestion, eh sana sabihin niyo sa amin kung paano yung maingganyo yung tao. <laughs> in, in, in the meantime, in the meantime, mayor, here we are. Uh, we're reopening uh, GCQ now, buong Metro Manila. I mean, what do you foresee? Are you still open to that? Are you still not taking that off the table that you still uh, are open to that scenario na hindi kung kailangan ma mahiwalay pa rin ang nabotas, you know, that's still an option for us. Hindi. Um, pero ayaw na natin eh. Sana naman natuto na sila, di ba? Um, hmm. Sana natuto eh, na sila. Kung hindi na, eh. or, or whatever. I mean, not even natuto. But if if for, some, for whatever reason, uh, and not necessarily to ascribe it to lack of discipline, not necessarily to ascribe it to, ano, kung nakita lang natin tumaas na naman yung numbers, uh, paano yan? Uh, you're still, uh, you, you, you're still, uh, might uh, do what you did before na, na you know if we have to make a decision on our own kiwalay sa NCR we're still open to that hindi syempre health is a primary diba uh, it cannot be traded for, or exchanged for anything else eh. but we just don't want to go there and sana naman nat natuto na yung tao but if push comes to shove then what can we do diba ibig sabihin kung Wag naman sana tumaas kasi kanina ang meeting namin, oh, nasa 15% na tayo. Mahirap naman, it is difficult for the number to stay at the same. Di ba? Either tataas yan o bababa. So, pagsikapan na natin ibaba siya para wag siyang, wag natin bigyan ng chance na tumaas yung numero. So, ngayon, strictohan natin yung uh, um, pagsuot ng face mask. Kasi, alam mo, um, um, Robbie, um, the problem is Di ba pag naglalabas yung ng regulation, sana kung lahat ng tao tinit, binabasa yung regulation para tignan kung paano sundin. May mga tao kasi binabasa yung regulation para tignan kung paano lulusutan yung mga regulasyon ng gobyerno. Yun ang problema eh, di ba? Ang ugali nila, yun nga yung point eh, sabi nga nila, kaya raw nagla-lockdown, hopefully nga, mabago yung behavior. So, hindi mo ba yun nakikita man lang sa mga taga-nabotas? Ah, tignan natin, tignan natin. <laughs> mahirap, <laughs> mahirap. <laughs> mahirap, <laughs> mahirap, <laughs> mahirap sumagot eh. Tignan muna natin, um, subukan natin na, uh, um, tignan natin, hindi <laughs> ko talaga matagot eh. To your credit and to the credit of your people, I, we would like to think, when you say that the positivity rate has gone down from 23% to 14%, yes, we attribute that to, to lockdowns, the hard decisions, and so on. But wouldn't you attribute part of that as well to, uh, baka indicator to na magig, nagiging mas disiplinado nga mga tao rin? Yes, um, um, yun isang indicator, but the problem is, the move, kung, kung sasabihin niyo sa akin na sa MECQ pa tayo ngayon, masasagot ko yan. Di ba? But the problem is you loosen up a bit eh. So we have to see. Eh. Pangalawang araw pa lang eh. Tignan natin kung papaano yung, yung nangyari pag loosen up. Okay, isang example. Ngayon pumayag, pati na botas, papayag na rin doon sa 24-hour delivery and pick up of food. Mm. Di ba? So we will have to see kung papaano naman yung magiging epekto niyan. Di ba? So katulad doon sa nabotas, diniwanag ko, Yung delivery, 24 hours. Pero yung pick-up o take-out, ang pwede na mag-pick-up o mag-take-out, yung apor at the time of the curfew. Yes. Ibig sabihin, kung ikaw ay nagtatrabaho sa call center, pwede mo pick-upin yung pagkain mo ng, uh, um, during 12, 12 midnight. Pero yes. kung ang trabaho mo is 8, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., nagutom pa ng alas 12 ng ating gabi, Hindi mo na pwede, pwede pick up yung pagkain mo, pa-deliver mo na. Mm -hmm. But of course, that again, iniisip na ng mga tao kung paano lulusutan yan for sigurado. <laughs> <laughs> mayor, <laughs> mayor, paano yung resistance, Mayor? Kung ganyang kalikas yung resistance sa pag-testing, you need very good contact tracers. Kumusta yung contact tracing capability niya and are you, are you ramping it up? Yes, we have uh, 13 contact tracing teams. No? Ang oh. isa pang ginawa namin, okay, Lahat ng na-contact trace, kasi di ba dati, iniintay na kung sino yung mag-positive, yun ang kinocontact trace. Primary case, lahat ng naging contacts niya, kailangan mag-swab, di ba? Yeah. <laughs> Pag nag-swab sila, they fill up a form saying kung sino yung naging contact nila. Para in advance, 
in advance, pag nag-positive sila, meron nang parang preliminary contact, no? Yes. And then, uh-huh. ito na naman, controversial na naman to, no? They sign a waiver na hmm. they have to give the correct information, um, doon sa personal information nila, tsaka yung naging contact nila. Otherwise, um, liable na naman sila sa RA 11332, no? So, yan, yan eh, para mapabilis yung contact tracing process because ang gusto namin, within 24 hours, matapos yung contact tracing. Contact Dahil, hindi namin madadala sa isolation facility yung nag-positive kung hindi pa siya tapos i-contact trace. So, kaya hmm. dapat matapos yung within 24 hours so that within 48 hours from the time that the person has been found out to be positive, madala ka agad siya sa isolation facility. And then, within four, within 24 hours from the time na makontact trace, dapat the next day, dinadala na siya sa, sa swab test. Pag nag-refuse siya, nakahanda na yung city legal na may sulat sa kanya. Na ito, hindi pa pwede yan dahil makapasuhan siya. So, ganun eh. Every day, every day, ganun yung ginagawa namin. Last okay. na lang, Mayor. Last na lang, Mayor. Short na. Yes. Anong masasabi mo, nakakatulong ba sa'yo yung mga big brothers mo? Ah, sa akin, wala akong issue. Wala akong issue. Um, nakakatulong sila. Wala akong issue. Um, lahat naman, kailangan namin ng tulong. Hirap din kami, eh, di ba? <laughs> Ibig sabihin, uh, so, kailangan namin ng... Uh, yeah. ng uh, tulong, di ba? Napapagod mm. din naman yung mga kasama ko sa City Hall, di ba? Isipin nyo, um, isipin nyo, just to be able to contact trace them on the same day, magtatabaho yan hanggang 10 p.m., mm. 11 p.m. And then, para masigurado na madadala sila bukas sa isolation facility, kasi pagkatapos pa lang sila makontact trace, saka pa lang namin pwede sabihin na pwede na siyang dalhin sa isolation facility. So mga 10 p.m. yan, 11 p.m. Masisipag din naman yung mga national, national government. Eh. I mean, in in my experience, hanggang 12 midnight naghahanap yan kung saan dadaling isolation facility yung mga tao. Then you still have to arrange the transportation kasi hindi naman fix yan. So kung ngayon 50, hahanap ka ng bus na dalawa kasi 25 lang laman ng bus. So hanggang alas 12, hanggang alauna ng hating gabi, hanapan yan. Hanapan ng venue muna, hanapan ng bus. The next day, iintayin ulit yung positive, iko-contact trace ulit. Tapos pag na-contact trace, um, sasabihin na naman sa national government, o oh, ito, ito yung mga kailangan namin bed, hanap na naman sila ng bed, hanap ng bus. So, hindi, <laughs> hindi siya madaling proteso. Okay. okay. Mayor, Mayor Toby Tianco of Navotas, good luck po sa testing nyo and contact tracing. Sa inyo na lang kami magpapaswab test. <laughs> Oh, nga, pwede, ba? <laughs> pwede, pwede naman bibigyan natin ng uh, special total. Total hindi naman hindi naman uh, fully utilized ng mga kababayan namin, 'di ba? Why not give it to oh, to hi. others, 'di ba? <laughs> Bola lang 'yon, Mayor. Thank you for joining the chips. Yeah, salamat thank you at uh, good luck to salamat all. Of us. Okay, stay safe, okay. stay safe. Uh, okay. Salamat, salamat. Okay, that will be all for this special edition of the chips. We hope what was discussed here will keep the conversation going. I'm Ami Paminton of the Philippine Star. Yes, but before we go on, happy birthday to our president and CEO, huh? Robert Gala. Happy and, birthday. And, and also uh, the first vice president of Signal, si Shena Olaso. Happy birthday. Yeah. Happy, birthday. happy birthday, Mom Sar. Okay. Okay. Happy birthday, ma'am, sir. Okay. I'm Luchi Cruz Valdez of News 5. I'm Robbie Alampay, and we are One News.